Struggling with ladder anxiety could be holding you back, but today I'm going to show you how to turn it into an advantage. Hi, I'm Ken Nicholas, the manager of the University of Guam's Collegiate Esports program. Over the years, I've helped over 100 college athletes unlock their potential in various aspects of their lives, including performance, mental fortitude, and social skills. Today, I'm sharing some of the strategies and lessons that I've taught them to help you overcome common issues like ladder anxiety in Hearthstone and beyond. I also received my certification from the Fit Gamer Coaching Development Program, which was previously developed by Cloud9, and I have hit Legend many times, peaking as high as Legend 4 and finishing another season at uh, Legend 25 many, many years ago. But on to today, ladder anxiety. Ladder anxiety is an obstacle that is very commonplace in games with the rank system. You, can, you know, think of like Dota, League of Legends, Hearthstone, Valorant, etc. At its root, ladder anxiety is just another form of performance anxiety uh, with traditional athletes, right? As such, there are tried and true methods to approach this, and we will touch briefly on a few here in this uh, presentation. In today's video, we will be discussing loss aversion and its impact on ladder anxiety. Uh, as well as uh, how we deal with ladder anxiety and how we can improve as a player, which is directly related to that. If, if you have any questions, please take a timestamp or just let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to provide a sufficient explanation. Um, I also do not want this video to be too long, so I'll do my best to be concise where possible. And keep in mind, these are just a few of the ways to really deal with ladder anxiety. This is, this is ways uh, and suggestions that I like the most. These are not the only things. Um, you may have a different way of different uh, dealing with uh, ladder anxiety, and those are all okay. Okay, I just wanted to give you a few of the solutions and aspects and perspectives that I have towards it. Okay, so ladder anxiety and loss aversion. So first off, let's imagine this: you're at diamond one for the first time in your life. You're two games away from hitting legend, uh, and it's an amazing accomplishment. But the pressure you feel at this point is immense. You've never been this high, right? What if you start playing into a bunch of tough matchups and you fall down to Diamond 4, right? Will you ever hit Legend? Worse yet, maybe you never come back to Diamond 1 again, right? Like, this is the exact feeling that I felt the first time I climbed to Legend with Patron Warrior over six, or I'm sorry, over eight years ago, and one that I'm sure many of you can relate to, not only in the rank ladder situation here in Hearthstone, or not even in not only in the rank ladder situation in another game like Street Fighter or Dota, but also in real life. We've all had these situation situations where we've gotten close to a goal and then felt that anxiety of what happens if we fail to reach this pinnacle once we're so close to the top. At least in the gaming sense, we call this ladder anxiety. Being afraid to queue because you're afraid of losing your rank. Now, when you play on a rank ladder, whether it's Hearthstone or Dota, you either go up or down. You win a game, your MMR improves. You lose a game, your MMR gets worse. Gaining one star in Hearthstone, that feels pretty good. Then why does losing one star feel so much worse, right? This is also known as loss aversion, okay? A cognitive bias that describes why, for individuals, the pain of losing is psychologically exponentially as powerful as the pleasure of gaining. The Legend uh, Hearthstone Climb is a perfect example of this, right? Um, when you start the season, when a season resets, you're at Bronze 25 or whatever the rank is. You are given a streak multiplier. Uh, if you hit Legend, if you're High Legend, that streak is 11x. Uh, if you hit Legend but you're not, you know, top 8%, that's like 10x. And if you didn't hit Legend but you hit Diamond 5, that's probably 9x. Okay, I'm not sure. But... What happens is for X amount of ranks that you gain, you will get a bonus star every time you win, right? And you, you guys all know this. You all play the game, so you, you're familiar with this. Now, we typically forget that this exists. Yet, if we are like Diamond 3 and we lose a game or we're like Diamond 1 and we lose a game, we think like, oh, man, I have to win a game just to get back to where I was one game earlier, and then I have to win another game to move up a star, right? Now, this is true. But we tend to forget that from bronze 10 to diamond 3, we were gaining an extra star or even more every game. Usually when I play, like I go from like my first game in bronze, it's from bronze 10 to like bronze 5 or something like that, right? It was like a huge jump. 
Like I'm going to go from bronze to diamond unless in like 10 games or less. So loss aversion is why sometimes people feel this way. Like why we get so upset. Like when we lose that rank, clearly we're moving up, but for some reason, the loss affects us so much more, but our climb is still normal. Our climb is perfect. So how do we deal with this? How do we deal this with this, this these feelings of loss aversion and, and, and this latter anxiety? And I want to say there's two main things. The first one is to control what you can. First off, remember that Hearthstone can be random. Discover a random minion. Hit a random minion. Uh, there are a ton of instances in the game that have a major effect on the pace of the game. Success is based largely on making the optimal plays out in linear situations so that you can hedge your chances in a variety of these random situations. The more often you do that, the more often you will win games. Honestly, Hearthstone is really close to chess, okay? Both games, where each player moves on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. And in chess, beginner's chess at least, the simple rule is to not blunder. And a blunder is like a clear mistake in chess. And, and often it is very game losing. Like you blunder a piece early in the game. If both players are playing accurate at the point, uh, the, the guy with more pieces is going to win. Okay, chess is kind of, I don't want to say it's figured out, but like blundering is, uh, it's game losing. Okay, the same rings true for Hearthstone. You need to make as many good moves every time it's your turn to better position yourself to win the game in the long run. And this is what pro players do. You got to make good early opening moves all the time. You need to mulligan as optimal as possible. You need to play cards, sometimes in a less valuable situation, because oftentimes that's more optimal. You know, for instance, say you're playing warrior, and for whatever reason, you're running greedy partner, you're against a pally or a hunter, they, they play a one drop. And the only card you have that you can play in the next four turns is a greedy partner. But the greedy partner doesn't have another two drop in your hand. So if you play him on turn two, you won't get the coin. However, that might be a situation where playing him as a tempo two, three for two without his battle cry might be the right play. It might be the optimal play. It's not the value play, but it's the optimal play. So you need to be able to identify these types of situations. And by making these solid moves, you put yourself in a potential winning situation as the game continues. You see this picture here. We have um, Branch Ricky. If you don't know him, it's no big deal. He's an old, old basketball executive. Um, he said, luck is the residue of design. And, I, you know, we're paraphrasing what he said, and he's paraphrasing. And he's, you know, interpreting something that was written by uh, the poet John Milton. But basically, he was saying that um, when effort and preparation are exhausted, then luck becomes residue by design. What that means is if you prepare as much as you can and you try as hard as you can, then you will manifest luck. You will make your own luck. And if this is true to Hearthstone. Now, you need to learn how to reframe the analysis of your games and your expectations in each match to temper the emotion and fear you have of playing the game. Did Rag hit, have a 25% chance of hitting your face and did it hit you for lethal? Boo hoo, right? One in four chance and it hit face. Like, what is up with that? Well, okay, did you have an out? Could you have played muster for battle and put three more units on the board? That would have cut the chance by 12%, right? You know, was there a 1% of chance of dying and you know, your opponent drew the one card and or, you know, he discovered the one card out of 99 cards and he got the one card and, and he won? Well, okay, we'll take those odds. On to the next game. It's important that you be critical about the decisions you make in every game. Did you have an alternative line of play? In hindsight, would it have been better? You know, make note. Making this change might increase your win rate by 5% or more. And you can apply this to real life as well, okay? And, you know, and, and while the positive is true, I want you to also remember that the inverse can also be true. Sometimes you can do everything right. You know, sometimes you can make the optimal plays and do everything in your power to win, and you just don't win. Sometimes the opponent has a better draw. Sometimes you draw his one out. You know, maybe he's lucky. Or simply, maybe they're just better than you. And that is absolutely okay. You know what pros have that put them a tier above most other players? They have strong mental. Players with better, better mental fortitude are able to win because they can clutch out these difficult situations 
by maintaining focus and logic and accepting the result of the game as simply that, the result. So in this picture here, you see Pocket Train, right? He's the reigning world champ. Uh, he's the, the latest Masters champion, um, multiple time Masters Tour finisher in 2023. Uh, you know, he, he's been on the Pro Tour circuit since like 2021 or so. It took him six or seven years to hit Legend the first time, okay? Supposedly, all okay? right? Uh, but he's the best player in the world. And it took him six or seven years to even hit, you know, Legend, which a lot of people consider this relatively easy to achieve benchmark, but he's the greatest player on the planet, right? At least at this moment, the latter it's intimidating. So you need to reframe what that experience is like. Okay. Remember that your current rank is a snapshot of your effort and, and abilities at that current moment. Okay. If you play the game a lot, you're likely at your highest rank or at a higher rank. If you aren't playing the game as often as you normally do, maybe you're at a lower rank, right? It's just how much effort and, and experience you're putting in at any given time. And guess what? In Hearthstone, it resets every month. Even Pocket Train, the best player in the world, when May 1st came around, he went back to bronze whatever. Of course, he had the 11X, which made his climb probably a lot easier than, than the normal people. But, you know, he has to work for it every month. OK, with that in mind, realize that when the ladder resets, you are likely not at your true rank. You are at your current rank, but not what your actual skills are at. Climbing the ladder is meant to help you find an accurate estimation of what your skill level is. For instance, maybe you are on a climb and you're diamond nine and the highest you've been is diamond three and you're usually diamond five. So it's logical to conclude that if you've played like you normally play and you play the same amount of games, you should hit diamond five. Now, once you hit diamond three, the pressure of playing becomes stronger and maybe things become more difficult because to the best of your knowledge, you don't actually know if you couldn't win at the field. And the reality is you won't know unless you queue and find out. Oftentimes you'll surprise yourself and find out that you are in fact better than diamond three and that you can make the climb to legend is easy. But sometimes you can't break past the barrier. And that's okay. That just means that that is your current skill cap at that point in time. But your current skill cap isn't some unbreakable ceiling. It is just where you're at right now. And that's why you need to improve. All right? Remember, the ladder is a journey of self-discovery and improvement. Okay? Learn to embrace the opportunity to challenge yourself and enjoy what growth is like. When you go to the gym, you aren't benching like 45 plates like it's easy, right? Those take time. It, there, there's some point before you can start benching like Chris Bumstead, all right? You need to work up those things. Find your limits and let them motivate you to push past them. Don't let them discourage you to stop. Just become better. The better you become at Hearthstone, the easier your climb will be. And the easier it will be to reach those goals that are meaningful to you. You can apply this to life as well. If you want to be better, here are some things you can do right away, right now, that will hopefully make you improve quicker. But first off, I want you to be honest with yourself and why you play Hearthstone. Personally, at this point in my life, I play Hearthstone because I love the game. I'm an old man. My son is two, almost three years old. I don't have a lot of time. I can't be queuing up one or two hour game. I can't you know, like queue up a one hour ranked game of Dota. I can't play... 40 hours of uh, World of Warcraft a week. I can't raid, you know, those things. I just don't have the time to do, right? So I Hearthstone is my outlet for fun. Reaching High Legend, it's not my goal. You know, I play the game because I enjoy it and I'm just content to, you know, collect the cards, finish daily quests, play new decks, enjoy it. If I'm top 1,000 Legend or 1,500, whatever, that's awesome. But I know that personally playing four games a day, I'm not going to hit top 1,000. I'm not good enough. My my 54% win rate or whatever it may be, that's not going to get me top 1,000 playing four games a day. Be honest with your skill and what you want to achieve in the game. Remembering that will help keep yourself in check whenever you start to become a victim of ladder anxiety. Now, here are the th three things I suggest. Number one, play to improve. Use each game as an opportunity for learning. Identify like one to three key takeaways from each match and continuously refine your gameplay. 
For instance, adjust your mulligans if you found a card that worked well or didn't work well in a certain matchup. You know, maybe you're like, oh, you know, I never keep this card because it's six mana, but it is just like game winning in versus priest. Okay, boom. You write that down so you remember that next time. Or you know, maybe your maybe your issue is uh, you know, you don't recognize when you should start swinging for the face instead of looking for trades on the board. This is a really common, uh, really common mistake among a lot of players. And I make this mistake sometimes too. Instead of going face, you know, I'm still looking to maintain board control and trade. When if I went face, I will have lethal next turn or in two turns. These are skills that you need to learn and patterns you need to recognize over time. And if you can't remember them, then you need to write them down. You need to document it somewhere. And this is why using a deck tracker for serious plays for serious play is also greatly suggested because you need to hold yourself accountable, right? Like I'm, wins are not everything. Win rate is not everything, but you should be documenting documenting that so you know and can identify like what your win rate is versus certain decks or when you play certain decks so you can see where you need to improve, okay? So be sure that you find something to take away from games, okay? Especially losing. Losing is part of the game and it's bound to happen. So make sure you can find something insightful from the loss so that so that that loss can work in your favor. Number two, measure quantity as well as quantity. And what I mean by this is you need to set quantifiable goals rather than focusing solely on your rank. You know, whether this is playing a certain number of games per month or, you know, maybe dedicating a X amount of hours a day to the game or, you know, you need to make a measurable uh, objective uh, because it's more tangible and more manageable. And, you know, I know hitting rank one legend, like that's a quantifiable goal, but you shouldn't use that type of goal uh, for success because there are too many factors that are out of your control. Okay. Instead, make sure your goal is something scalable and controllable to your level of commitment. Because if it's uncontrollable, like hitting a certain rank and you miss the goal, you're going to find yourself unhappy and unsatisfied. Conversely, if you set a realistic goal, like I want to play 100 games of Flood Paladin or I want to play, you know, 30 hours this month of Hearthstone, you know, this is much more realistic and measurable and uh, easier to track and manage. And once you complete it, you'll feel fulfilled. Lastly, prepare to play your best. Simple, simple phrase. I want you to remember this. If you feel better, you will perform better, regardless of whatever it is. Sports, uh, schoolwork, your job. If you feel better, you will perform better. And that is means a lot of things. And that's why health and wellness are important. If you're in better shape, you have better posture, you know, you're less big, you know, you're, you're going to feel better doing things. And this is a lesson, too, that I need to know. I, as a big guy myself, you know, I need to know that I'm not performing at the ideal state that I, I need to be. And I can do things in my life to help me reach a better level of performance in anything I do. Same rings true with Hearthstone. Before, before each serious ranked session, clear your mind and eliminate your distractions. Give yourself the best chance to succeed by fully immersing yourself in a learning experience. Remember that optimal performance requires optimal focus. One thing that I learned from the Fit Gamer Coaching Development Program, and I think this was very beneficial to my students, was the application of what is called quick drills. Now, these are like quick physical activities that take like about one to two minutes. It could be like doing a couple, doing some push-ups or, you know, doing some jumping jacks, or it could be just like, bouncing up and down and flailing your arms back and forth for like a minute or two minutes. Um, you know, obviously these drills help you get your blood flowing because, you know, you're, you're, you're bouncing up and down. But the real benefit is actually in your mental state. These activities usually like will clear your mind of anything that may have been bogging you down throughout the day. And by doing the quick drill, you have a clear mind and are ready to get into a game. I swear by it. I swear by it. If you do this, you will play better. 100%. Okay. Try it out. Just one minute, not even two minutes, just one minute of jumping up and down, getting your mind right. Okay. And if you, if you have a clear mind, then boom, no distractions. You don't have a kid screaming, bothering you. Your TV's not on. Get ready and play and you're going to play better. However, 
if you do these activities and you something is still bothering you and you're not in the right mindset to learn, maybe you're just really depressed for the day or just something is just, you have another priority that really needs to be addressed, address those priorities. Because the game, if you're playing to learn, you're in the bad state. You are not going to perform well. Your, your learning is not going to be optimal. Okay? It's going to hurt yourself. In conclusion, just to go over what we've talked about, ladder anxiety and loss aversion are, can be daunting obstacles in Hearthstone. But they're challenges that can be overcome with the right mindset and strategies. Okay? So first, remember to control what you can. You can't control everything. Hearthstone has a lot of random factors. But if you can make the optimal plays as best you can, you can limit the effect that randomness may have on your games when they occur. Number two, remember that rank is ever-changing. The ladder resets every month. As such, your current rank is a snapshot of your current place on the ladder, not necessarily your skill. Don't let that number define you. And lastly, improve. Remember that the journey to improvement is just as important as reaching your goal of legend. By embracing a growth mindset, focusing on continuous learning, and setting tangible goals, you can navigate the ladder with confidence and resilience. I'll leave you with this one quote. I can't guarantee that if you do all these things I've told you that you will hit your goals. But if you don't queue for a game, I guarantee that you won't. I, that's my, that quote is from me, okay? <laughs> but that's really the truth. Ladder anxiety is the fear of trying to be better than what you are. And at the end of the day, you will not be better than what you are unless you take a risk. You got to risk something valuable to move on. You need to measure that. What's worth more? The potential of being greater than what you are now or the possibility of having a slight setback? Because you already know that you can be where you are. You've reached the point you are at. That's comfort. Let's go beyond comfort. Let's be better than what we are. Now that you learn how to tackle ladder anxiety and like loss version, um, I hope you can put these strategies into action. And I hope that you can share your own experiences and tips in the comments below to help others on this journey, you know, on this or, or dealing with this obstacle. Also, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know in the comments what you thought about lecture styled videos like this. I don't know how much I really would like to do this, um, but if you do like this type of content, I'm open to doing more in the future. Uh, but yeah, you know, thanks for watching. May your Hearthstone adventures be filled with triumphs and more learning opportunities.